Welcome to the Trap House Podcast. Thanks for joining us. If you haven't already, please like, share, and subscribe on all social media platforms. And now a quick word about our sponsors. We have Duke Traps with us. Check out duketraps.com. They manufacture over 40 different models of cage traps, coil and long springs, and body gripping style traps, as well as one of my personal favorites, the powder coated dog proofs. Check out duketraps.com. Need a place to sell your fur? Check out Grownwald Fur and Wool Company. Over 50 years in the fur business, the largest and most experienced direct receiver of wild fur in the world. Check out their website, gfwco.com. Top Lot Stretcher Company. They have all the fur processing tools you need to get the job done in the fur shed. From push pins to wooden stretchers, they got you covered. Check out toplotstretcherco.com. And this one's for the ladies that don't mind getting their hands a little dirty setting some traps. We have Trapping Girl Inc. with us. Check out their website, trappinggirlinc.com. They have a great selection of women's apparel, kids apparel, baits and lures, and trapping supplies. Check out trappinggirlinc.com. J3 Outdoors. They make American trapping products designed for maximum trap line efficiency with products like the Hags Bracket and Spring Clip as well as the universal lock and beaver rod ends. Get the tools you need to get the job done. Find out more at j3o.com. And there's only one true way to start out the day on the trap line, and that's with a hot cup of coffee from Trapline Coffee. They have great tasting blends to choose from, as well as chocolates. Head over to traplinecoffee.com for more. Weeby Knives. Check out weebyknives.com. They have a great selection of skinning knives, flushing knives, fur handling tools, and they'll give you the edge you need to get the job done. And you guessed it, they're wicked sharp. Check out WeebyKnives.com. And we'd like to welcome the newest sponsor to the team, No BS Lures. Don't let the name fool you. There's more than just bait and lure. This company offers trap line tools and hardware, fur handling supplies, and the No BS Traps. Check out NoBSLures.com. And last but not least, Hoosier Trapper Supply, home of the Top Dog Predator Bait, Jet Fuel Predator Lure, we offer a complete line of trapping baits and lures, deer scent, trap line tools and hardware, fur processing tools, and special package offers. Head over to HoosierTrapperSupply.com. All right, welcome back to the Trap House Podcast. we got a great guest with us today and uh, a new sponsor that's with us as well. Kendall, thank you from No BS Lures is with us. No problem, guys. Yeah. What what's what's new in your world these days? Uh, uh run 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 between um music and and uh, just running of the business, building traps. It's just go go go. You know, we got home the other morning, Sunday morning, at eight in the morning, sleep two hours, and you know, back to work at ten in the morning. It just I'm burning the candle on both ends, and I tell myself I need to slow down something, but it's hard to do. It's yeah. Hard to do. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for uh, taking the time to sit and chat with us. First time being on the show. Uh, with that being said, kind of fill us in how you even got started in this whole crazy industry. Uh, you know, uh, when I was seven years old, um, I started uh, trapping. There was a school teacher, uh, and uh, he started taking me to conventions and stuff. My older brother trapped a little bit, but uh, he never really got into it. And I just kind of, I suppose you could say, Took the bull by the horns and uh, just got really involved in it, you know, watching how the industry started and, and uh, when I was that young and where it was going. And back back then, you know, it was just kids my age everywhere up and down the aisles. And it's just, you know, I thought to myself, the older I got, um, God, this would be cool to do this, you know, um, full time. But, you know, realistically, when you go through your teen years, you think, you know, you forget about forget about things and you know are you really gonna do you really want to do this and stuff like that but where I really started saying it was probably when I was 15 16 I was running long line mink line with my moped you know I was doing 60 miles a day you know um, on a moped um, long line and I call it uh, already then and then at 19 um, I was really doing a lot of uh, coon trapping mink trapping because I consider myself a mink trapper um just really you know putting the hours in run 15 hour days you know to kill the numbers you know my longest coon line was 411 miles you know but I but I will honestly say 
I kind of burnt myself out, you know, um, I just wanted to do something and, uh, just to see if I could, you know, catch a lot of coon and, um, you know, I knew, I knew I had to put the time into it. And, uh, then as, as I got into my twenties, you know, um, everything just started really clicking and, you know, I've been in the business now, not a very long time since 2011. And, uh, I guess what really got me going into, uh, trap building and manufacturing is um, I, I really wasn't happy with what was out in the market you know and I was always a welder tinker to begin with I was always taking duke traps and modifying them how I liked them you know putting a mink fan on and laminating the jaws and um, you know and I just I said I was never going to build canine traps just like I was never going to build a beaver trap wolf trap um, but here we are now and we're full force and you know, but I, I will say uh, Wolf Trap got billed on a $20 bet from Matt Lumley and uh, our vice president in Montana. Said, I bet you can't build a Wolf Trap, you know, and I come back and I did and just like Beaver Trap. Guys wanted Beaver Traps and then built Beaver Traps. But, you know, where's it going to go? I don't know. Um, all I know is uh, we're busy, but I always say, you know, it's a customer base, you know, just like you guys know, if that pushes you, you know. Um, I had a guy at the uh, Minnesota Trapping Convention uh, last week. Yeah, last week. You know, Kendall, you're one of the youngest one in the industry as a dealer. And I'm like, you know, you start looking around, you're like, man, you know, it's like, where is it going to go? You know, when I reflect on that, all the traveling I do and, you know, like you guys do too. And it's like, you know, trying to get younger people into it. It's, it's, it's tough, you know. Um, but there's a lot of programs out there taking the kid trap and, you know, get them in that way. But, um, you know, I'm not saying I'm scared of where it's going to go, but how, how do you not, when you're full blown into it now with a business, right. how do you not think about it? But it does kind of make you wonder. So I can't, how old are you? I'm 51. Okay. Okay. 51. Yep. They, um, yeah, I mean, you've been around, you've been around a while too, but yeah, you on the, on the, in terms of business, you are one of the, one of the younger ones. So we were talking the other day, how many brands of lure that, that are still made by the original formulator? And if you think about it, it's not that many. No, no, it, it's, it's not, you know, it's uh, kind of like when I bought um, Rich Casper RK from Casey you know, uh, when I seen that up for sale, I, I can honestly say I never smelled it, but I knew the reputation behind it. And all right. I could think about in my mind is if I don't buy this, is that going to be another something that's going to get taken away from our industry? Mm -hmm. You know, kind of like the death ray, you know, um, same thing, you know, but the lure makers, it's like, you know, if somebody don't pick them up, you know, to keep that going, you know, where does it go? Right. You know, police side, you know, right. but there ain't like you just said, Charlie, it's, uh, it seems like we're losing it, you know, but, you know, I, I can't figure it out. It's, it's, uh, the fur market isn't the best out there, but we're still busy, you know, I mean, right. th thankfully, you know, so it is what it is, I guess. You know, I mean, we've been saying it for a few years if you're 35 and under these guys don't even ask what the fur market is i mean they're because they don't really have the baseline that we saw back in the day um by any means you know so there was that glimmer there in 2013 and we saw kind of an upward trend over the years but really that's been 10 11 years ago since we've seen that so right and i i think uh you nailed it right there it's uh i don't think people really not that they don't care but you know it's like golfing a lot of people don't get paid to golf, so they just want something to do, sure. you know, um, which is which is really cool. You know, I always said, where do all these traps go? You know, it's just, <laughs> you know, I guess I'm not meant to just question it, but it, it really makes you wonder where all this stuff goes, you yeah. know, for, for how small our industry is, you know. Right. But it is what it is. I guess on the other scheme of things, statistically, if you look at, say, there might be 200,000 trappers in the country, and there it I mean, if you go to the NTA and you think there's a dealer on every corner, you know, on everywhere, but in the scheme of things, there's not that many dealers out there. There's not. So there's, there's really not. And, and then on the manufacturing end, it's even much smaller. So, um, 
you know, to push that product out there. So, um, right. I mean, we're, and we, we're right in the heart of, you know, we, we were kicking around the idea for a couple of years and, uh, brother's trying to call me, but, uh, kicking around the idea for a couple of years of, uh, of, of do we, we're running out of room and we are, we're so out of room. We are, we're building a 90 by 130 new facility. Awesome. And, and we're going to all just because welding's been the toughest thing for us. Um, you know, we were, we haven't been able to keep stock and since we've been open, um, is it a good thing? It is, but it really makes me nervous. And I'm, I'm finally to the point where we're going robotic welding, you know, um, just because if it's you, you could have a lot of welders out there that hey I'll weld for you, but once you start throwing them dozens after dozen doing the same thing, cookie cutter, you know, you're just right. putting, putting traps together, you know. So that's our 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 biggest thing right there. So, but you know, it, it's it's a gamble, it's a big investment. Um, you know, we're we're doing going to be doing things outside the industry, um, but like I said, we're building right now. I got. Oh, a couple buddies that are building in their shop. You know, we're we're pretty much manufacturing out of 30 by 60 converted to hog building that was redone, that I redone. You know, I got brake presses down to a uh, big machine shops that I own that they are graciously let us in to like Kurt's going down the night, he has to punch um high desert spears, you know. Um, and what way we worked it out with them is um when they're done with their business for the day. They give us the key and they let us in because you're talking on, you know, 30,000 ton or 30,000 pound press, you know, that won't fit into our, our building until we get the new facility up. But yeah. So yeah, that's where we're at with everything, you know, so <laughs> we'll see what it is. It's not as big, but we just added a, uh, uh, 40 by 65, um, oh. built this spring. So, I mean, we're, we're sitting in it right now. We're I mean, it's like <laughs> we're just completely out of space and yeah. tripping over ourselves. And um, so we're, well, I've been fully committed my my life, but we're, you know, we just took another. You know, another well, you know, so. Well, well, the thing is what I'm seeing is, is uh, a lot of these dealers that you never even hear of, right? When they, you know, either get burnt out or, or something i mean it's going to either you us you know the, you know minnesota trap line whatever it's being spread out and you know as we still are in the game we're seeing it to where we either have, we either go with it and expand like what you guys just did you right. know or you know i mean we really don't have a choice i mean for our you know all the customers out there base you know right so which is pretty cool yeah, yeah i mean it I mean, we just got the point where we were so inefficient and so dysfunctional. It was like we either had to essentially, we had to build. We didn't have any choice. So, yeah. you know, yeah. and it's it's another commitment. But anyways. Yeah. No, I know. I so know. for those of you listening out there, uh, we're all committed. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. We really are. Yep. So, Kendall, the first trap you came out with was that one and a half modified Duke set up for Mank. Is that correct? The yeah. Power yeah, I... Uh... You know, I was running, oh man, I was buying them double jaws and then I was base plating them, putting yeah. a base plate on, cutting the ears off, laminating them, putting a mink pan on, welding um, a cement nail with a flopper pan. And then I thought to myself, you know, uh, I can remember, um, oh, Cumberland's, they, uh, they said, well, we'd like to carry some of these, you know, it's like. You know, and man, I got the first pallet of them in. I'm like, all I can think to myself is, why don't I just come up with my own, you know, kind of resembles, which a lot of traps kind of do to a point. And that's like, I'll take out a lot of the, you know, a lot of the welding, you know, away from it. And, you know, I wanted a 316 frame, heavy duty, welded. I didn't want riveted. I wanted welded, everything welded, you know, so yeah, that's where it where it started, and I can remember I was working road construction, and uh, uh, you get home at get home at night, go right to the shed to weld, you know, up at four in the morning, and then playing music on the weekend, and then you know when I got into the business here, you know, leaving, asking my superintendent to leave construction so I can go do conventions and 
which he was good about it, but he just like Kendall. He said, you get laid off. When you got hired here, you said you'll take the job, but you need laid off November to try out. And we agreed to that. He said, now we're in our busy season. Now you're asking time to leave for the band, to go to conventions. And they did. They worked with me for three years. And finally, he just told me, you got to choose. And I, every time I see him, I thank him. I'm like, thank you for giving me that. You know, but that's where it started was that one and a half Duke. And I still, you know what? I still got a pile of them. I tell Bill Duke all the time. I got all them with the flopper pans on. I used to run a, it was a 175 Victor four by four pan, square pan. I got, I bet I got 300 of them in my barn, all tricked out, ready to roll, you know, and I'll never get rid of them, you know, so. Yeah. But it's pretty awesome. It really is. Yeah. It really is. So. Yeah, the, um. Yeah, you can yeah, see the, when I talk mink trap and my eyes just light up. Everybody's like, coyote trap. I'm like, nah, I'm actually a mink trapper. You know, I love catching mink. Um, but we haven't had water for, you know, I mean, we had a lot of water this year, but now crooks are drying up quick and, you know, it is what it is. So, yeah. But, you know, that's where, that's where how, how she started. Where are you located? I mean, Iowa, but rough. Allison, Iowa, Central Iowa, between um, Mason City and Waterloo, about 60 miles from Minnesota border. So I'm in a good area for, you know, trap and bank. I mean, you got the, the ditches, uh, the deep ditches with a lot of tile, you know. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I just hope we have water because I, before I get too much older, I want to I wanna do X amount of coyotes, coon, bank, and, you know, but last couple of years we've been dry you know so that's what it is that's that's similar to what like gerald schmidt was running back in the day when he was running lots of ming traps is that correct as far yeah. as type of country oh yeah yeah i mean uh everybody pretty much run the one and a half um trap you know or number 11 that might have been not the greatest ming trap Heck of a coon trap, but one and a half was the way to go with pocket set. You know, I mean, you go out to like Pennsylvania. I can remember going to make Toberfest, and uh, uh, I had to give a demo a few years ago. I'll never forget a guy said, Well, go ahead and dig your pocket into this ground out here. Start going in, all you do is hit rock, you know. And he looked at me and he's like, well, What are you going to do now, Iowa boy? I'm like, <laughs> I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to take a six inch piece of tile, 12, 15 inches long. That's my pocket. And his jaw dropped down. <laughs> Another guy come up over to me at the end. He goes, you've been in our state for a half an hour. And he said, you just told everybody what I've been doing for years to catch <laughs> 50 or 70 mink. You know, I mean, that you, you take with what you got, you know, right. you know, but, but yeah, that, that trap is, um, you know, and it's crazy because today, I mean, we were just, you know, F&T called and um, their back ordered on them on the one and a half laminated and uh, Kurt took how many dozen orders today. So it's it's weird how, you know, where the fur market is, but we have water and that's what, I mean, we're selling drowners left and right, you know, it's just like, but people are going to do it. You know what I mean? They're going to do it. Yeah. So, which is cool. Very yeah. cool. But yeah, we sell, I had this talk with a couple dealers. They, they say they will sell more regular jaw or double jaw, but like F and T it's, it's, or us, it's all laminated double jaw. You know, it's just, it's crazy. You know how it goes, but it just means more welding. Yeah. You know, that's all it means. So I've noticed over the years, like when we had that, spike in 2013 and everybody's jumping back into it that now the way it is we sell percentage wise proportionally a higher end trap much more of those than we do the lower end stuff when they when the market gets super high you start selling everything that's about as cheap as you know what i mean yep so they're, they're buying duke one and three quarter round jaw jaws that kind of thing well, just a price point. And then yeah. um, you sell a lot more of that kind of stuff. But as, as the market, like where, where we're at now, is basically everybody left once once a good quality, you know, a higher end trap. 
Right, right. You know, it's just um, how I was talking to a, a, just a guy at the NTA, you know, and I can remember uh, talking like with traps or just how people are buying. I can remember um, about the death rate from Lee Steinmeier. He's like, you're going to sell more two footers, 10 to one than three footers. Us, we're selling three footers versus two footers. Well, a couple of guys, I really paid attention to it. It's like there's more guys getting into ADC work, you know, and they're getting paid for it. So that that's some of this pushing by people are buying, I believe. Um, you know, and a guy told me that. He's like, Oh yeah, he's like, I just got into this two years ago. And he goes, My buddy's now into it. He said, We're doing damage control work because the market, nobody's trapping. And he said, We want whatever we need, you, you know, set us up, you know? So I think we're seeing a, a lot of that going on, um, you know? Um, so guys are buying, um, but you know, with that firm market comes back, that little glimpse in that coon market, which there is around here, man, I mean, we're seeing it on the, you know, the drowners, the one halves and, you know, guys that I know for a fact already have, 300, 400 of my traps. And, you know, you just put another order in for 20 dozen, you know, so did they sell them, get out of them? I don't know. Are they in the barn hanging? But, you know, no. just, I ain't gonna, I mean, I'm not going to complain. Yeah. You know, not going to complain at all, but it's pretty cool. Pretty yeah. cool. I mean, you, I have wondered where all this equipment goes. I mean, year after oh. year, it's just crazy. Yeah. I mean, it's just, I wonder about that all the time, but, you know, like me, I have, Throughout the states I trap, I got probably 300 extremes in each state already planted in a barn somewhere or a shed. All I do is hook onto my toy hauler and go to that state and everything's there, you know. So, um, but to do that, you know, it, it's it's not cheap to outfit, you know. Um, but I, I, I think that's where it's going. Um, you know, I have a lot of friends that are down in Texas, you know, trapping. Um, you know, everybody's looking for um, that next place to get paid, you know. And we had, it. I had t two calls this week, e or emails. I'll give you X amount of dollars if you can get me into here. It's like, nope. You know, there, here's the reason, man. I mean, you work at something hard and um, you, you don't know what could happen. You know what I'm saying? Not that you want to hog it all, but, you know, if you don't know somebody, that's that's kind of playing Russian roulette to say, oh yeah, go down to here and you know, here's where I'm trapping, you know, go to yeah. this furniture, you know. <laughs> so 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 when when did you kind of get into canine trapping then? I always canine trapped. Um, but when I built the business, I always I I said to myself, I'm gonna start it with Coon and I'm just gonna slowly release that out there which I did, um, the videos, the coon bait, da, da, da. I, I, I had that all planned to, to do it this way. And then I was going to do mink, which I did. And then I was going to do coyotes. I mean, I always trapped canines, but I was really into the mink trap. And, but I knew I had to, I felt like that's the way I had to do it to build a business that when you're being competed against, you know, um, the big dogs, I mean, and I'm a trapper. I am. Um, uh, I always said, you know, I'm probably the worst business person um, because I'm I'm 100% trapper. You know, I'm just there to, you know, sell our products and talk about stuff and you know, but but yeah, but out of state, you know, doing out of state trapping, I started down in Mississippi, Alabama. That's been man, I don't even know. It's been a while ago, and I just knew down there. I said to myself. I was down in Alabama one night skinning them coyotes. I don't know why it was, but I skinned them coyotes. <laughs> it was like the Rocky. It was like the Rocky movie. I had a little light in this uh, shed hanging over me. I was drinking a beer or whatever. It was like midnight, and the fleas and everything was going. It was raining outside, water dripping through the shed. And I just said to myself, "I need to find a sandbox, you know, and I you need to find a sandbox and don't look back." And that's sort of you know, Arizona, I'm in Arizona now and New Mexico and of course the Dakotas. Um, but I, I do, I love the South. I mean, I did the Mississippi, 
you know, beaver trap and all that. I really love that, but it will really tell you what kind of trapper you are when you're starting to get three, four inches of rain and the water and the gumbo. And it's, it's tough. I, you look at them guys that are down doing that, man, it's you gotta, you gotta see it through. I mean, yeah. I mean, really do it. It's not like me. I mean, I might get one, one, two rain days in two months. It's like, I just tell people, yeah, I catch a lot, but you know what? I should be. That's what I tell people. I'm going to where they are. I should be catching that. I, I, I take the time to do it. I got the weather to do it. I got no hardly any freezing. I should be catching that. Don't make me like super trapper. Um, I should be catching it for the amount I'm putting into it. You yeah. know? That's what I think people forget. Yeah. Like, they really do. You know. Yeah, I think I've, we've we've been there in those down south monsoons and swamplands. Mm. Yeah. I mean it's but oh it's terrible. <laughs> yeah, we're like I've, in Texas these days right now. So we're pretty <laughs> you know, and that's where that's where I'm at. It's just uh you know, I I love the Dakotas. I really love the Dakotas trapping, but then you know this year I'm I gotta do North Dakota, South Dakota, New Mexico, and then Arizona gig, and then I go to Texas. And when I get down to Texas, I don't know when you guys are down there, but I always get down there usually in March, and it's like, and I'm way down in the southern part, ninety degrees, and it's okay. like, uh, you know. But I I mean, at first year I didn't like it at all. I'm just like, you know, I don't know if this is for me. I mean, just. Uh, but the last couple of years, I started enjoying it. I think it's, I think it's you, you figure out your ranches. You know what I mean? Yeah. I hate new property, um, but once you get it figured out, it's like everything rolls. You know, right. and I do. I love it. I got a lot of friends that are down there trapping. A couple of guys from my island are down there trapping. You know, so it is what it is. Yeah. And you take it. You take it, or other somebody else will be. You know. So if you got the opportunity, do it. You yeah. know very big yeah we're up we're up we normally go early february we're up in the panhandle so we're on oh. a completely other oh. end and you guys got a good cat up there a very yes cat. Yeah. yeah and we are if you go about i don't know a half hour north of where we're at it's that flat open irrigated farm ground and we're in kind of it's we're on a cattle big cattle ranch so we're in that rougher some of it's open flat but it's all cattle country there's no there's no row crops or anything like that but yeah but yeah that's a, that's a pretty nice cat and those coyotes are not bad they're worth skin and even right know, so. they are they are i was going to be on the wagner ranch i i had the wagner like five hundred thousand acres and uh that was right up in there not really into the panhandle but that was up there and uh it, when i toured it and they gave me the tour of everything i mean i'm not kidding you i mean there were so many coyotes running and and it was just mind-boggling and i was telling o'gorman about it and uh he sent me uh literature then in the mail on that ranch and they estimated like ten thousand coyotes which out throughout there and he's like i will tell you right now he said you should be able to kill 400 coyotes easy a month and as many coyotes as i've seen i mean yeah it was a done deal but what fell through was they were big into their quail hunting and staying cranky. And I trap for some of his ranches right now down in Arizona. So that's what I just can't figure out. But huge into quail hunting and dogs. And uh, the two, three weeks before I was going to go down there, they told me, hey, it's not going to work. And I'm like, well, what happened? And they're like, well, there's no, in his play area, which is 40,000 acres, that nobody could trap his play area just for hunting. Which is <laughs> mind boggling anyway. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, there's no quail there. So he wants to go out through the whole ranch and try to find the quail. Of course, my reaction, I'm like, well, I'll tell you why there's no quail. He goes, hasn't been trapped. It, it's, it's, there's coyotes everywhere, bobcats everywhere, but afraid to get dog caught, you know. And I mean, when you're dealing with, you know, big people like that, um, I mean, wildlife biologists, everything else, it's just, I mean, you're basically you ain't gonna win you know so that was my story behind that it's just like i mean i had it and just like but i mean i got great clients now that i'm trapping for 
I was always worried, you know, I'm not going to have enough ground to trap, da, 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 even though I'm already trapping how many months out of the year. But, um, <laughs> but it was that, that was, that was the, I always wanted to trap the Wagner, you know, because man, there was just like when you got 500,000 acres, I mean, you're not going to get it all trapped. You know yeah. what I mean? You're going to trap it in 40,000 acre section, you know, and just, but it is what it is. But I, I took that hard. Well, when you're, Three weeks before you're leaving. You oh, know, yeah. I'm like, I would. I, I think I just literally had tears in my eyes. I'm like, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? <laughs> you know? Yeah. But it all works out. And it did. It all works out. You still talk to him occasionally? Uh, that ranch? Yeah. yeah actually, so actually, the ranch manager, he was on Yellowstone. Okay. So it's Heath. Uh, Heath was his first name. He was on Yellowstone for. Uh, he had to play a little part or whatever. I think he was in a bar or whatever. And some chick asked him to dance or whatever. And that was his part. But I reach out to him all the time. Hey, if you need a trapper, yeah, yeah, I'll, we'll, we'll keep you in mind. I mean, it's not going to happen, you know. Um, but like I said, you know, I'm I'm to the point now, I, you know, the ground I got, the ranches I got, I'm dedicated to them. You know, and it's uh, them ranchers down there in Arizona, they're just like, you know, Make sure you're you're back here next year. You can't leave us, and you know all them ranchers are handed down. Sure. And so that you deal with this person, but like I said, I'm not getting none of us are. We're not getting any younger, you know. So do it do it when you can. That's what I always say. Yeah. You better be doing it. You know. Yeah. So. Yeah. You know, over the years, I've talked to a number of people that are trapped here in Indiana, or you know, I'll see them on a regular basis, and they all. You know, now they're, some of them are gone already, you know, and they talk about, oh, they'd like to go out west and trap, or they'd like to just, or even go to Iowa or wherever, you know, and, and they were, they were just talking about running, you know, 10 days or a couple of weeks or just, just for, and they never, you know, they never did it. And it's like, oh, and, and you know, I think there's people out there, they're just, um, they're almost not upset but they're like well it must be nice i mean whether they're joking or whatever you know it must be nice to be able to trap it it is you yeah. know i dedicated my life to i say this all the time in the back of my catalog living the dream i dedicated my life back in 93 to uh, do two things to make sure i consider them always a hobby and to make a living on that and you know i'm fortunate enough to be doing that you know and uh but i tell people it's like you know you don't like something you better find what you like and you better do it because life is uh too short you know i mean there's a lot of guys like i said all the time well how, how do you get into this how do you get into this i'll tell you how i get into it i find that one rancher and i let them find all the other ranchers because yeah. i can't pull on a lot of these places with an iowa plate you know i mean <laughs> i would play hey can i trap yeah i mean you have to have a good relationship with your ranch yeah. you know yeah, get that in. Yeah, and that's how. Yeah, that's like yeah, anything, and that's how I I went about it. You know, um, I had a guy at the NTA. You know, man, is there anything you can do? It's like, man, I don't. You know, I'll do what I can, but either you got to kind of watch. You know, I think you're going to get more out of it if if you see the trial and error yourself. You know what I mean? That's what I I look at is uh, the trial and error of you know, being turned down, no, the, the Wagner Ranch, you know, yes, you can trap it, and then no, I worked at it harder to find more places in Texas, you know, and now it's just, you know, it went into, I said I was going to be done in, in beginning of, or end of March, now it went into April, just then, you know, because I had to be back for music shows, but, but now I got stuff lined up in April when I really need to be done because of the heat, but, see what happens <laughs> see what happens i just need to say no i guess <laughs> yeah so we definitely got to talk you keep you mentioned music we got to talk some music because you know i'm a music lover yep yep so uh you're gonna sing for us right now on the spot Probably not. <laughs> don't put me on the spot you know <laughs> I can Not I can the get proper up and, microphone set up. Yeah, I understand. Exactly, exactly. We don't want to break the speakers that are one we do have here. <laughs> but you know, it's uh 
Yeah, I mean, music, music's been a passion, man, for a long time. And it's just, uh, I've been doing it for so long, traveling, touring, did the tour. Um, but, you know, just like I said, getting home, at, you know, my brother, Kurt, he's in the band, plays bass. I got both of my brothers into music. Um, and uh, my older brother does sound, you know, does huge sound systems. They just he just did a show with Sawyer Brown, you know, stuff like that. So um, it's pretty cool, you know. But it, it comes down to it right now, you know. I can remember Gerald Schmidt. He always he always he tells me. He told me quite a few years ago, and he's like, "Man, I don't know how you're gonna do it." He says, "Running the trap supply business and leaving to go to shows and you know singing and it's like the NTA I, NTA I had to leave Thursday, the NTA go three hours go play music." And then come back. Of course, I was back for the you know Friday and Saturday. And then Minnesota, I had to leave. Went up, set up. Had to leave Friday. Go play Friday night. Go back up Saturday. Mike Missouri, he <laughs> he went up and run my booth for me. I got there about eleven o'clock, just enough time to start tearing down and hook on the trailer and go back do a show Saturday night. You know, but. It, it is what it is. I mean, it's it's hard to, and Justin, I mean, if you like music, it's hard to let that go. I, I told myself I need to back off, I need to back off, but, you know, it's 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 an addiction, you know, really. It's an addiction. I well, call it, I'm a, con, a concert junkie. Yeah. 100% yeah. addiction. Like, I go to, Charlie can tell you, all, everything I could possibly go. Yeah, yeah, it just, you know. The only thing that's getting uh, getting to be a little much is, uh, man, we left up there to Minnesota. We were up by, well, we were up by Gerald doing the street dance. And uh, yeah, last Saturday night, we got done. We play, So we play normally four hours straight music, just straight music. Four hours of straight music. Time to tear down. I think we got in the truck at like three in the morning, three or four in the morning. And then just. You know, drive home. My brother's big on. I need to. I want to be home. I want to be home. You know, me. I'd be. I, I'd be rather like. You know, let's just get hotel room. You know, it's, where where do you draw the line? Right. I mean, there's so many nights <sighs> here in them rumble strips, and it's like, I don't know, but it, it is what it is. You know, it's like I always say, I'm gonna slow slow up up a little bit, but we're already booked. I think we got. 12 shows already for 25 we're, we're already booked at some casinos already next november up in the minnesota so it's like well i know i gotta play till play till next november for sure so <laughs> it, it, it's pretty cool when you do um demos at conventions i hear you got you put on quite the show you sing for the audience i've always yeah. been at the booth i've never actually been able to attend or yeah, sing. It, you know um we're very big on, um, you know, military, very, very, very big on military and, um, you know, respecting the country, the flag. And, uh, I've been doing the God bless, uh, Lee Greenwood, you know, and, okay. uh, that's, you know what? I did hear that echoing through. Yeah. I thought yeah. it was better than Lee Greenwood. I don't even like that guy. <laughs> <laughs> What's up? No, but I, I wasn't gonna, I wasn't gonna. And because I, my my throat was a little hoarse that day, and uh, I had a guy come up. He's like, "Hey, I got one request." I'm like, "What's that?" He goes, "Will you sing at your demo?" And I'm like, "Oh man, I suppose." <laughs> you know? So it's it, it, it's good. I mean, it was a perfect setting, United States flag. Bro, oh, yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, I mean, just just for w where everything's going, you know, and it's like, but I do, I it's. No matter how many times you do it, at first I get choked up every time. You know, it's just, I mean, you get if you're into music, you get really deep what a musician goes through. You know, I tell all their life stories in three, four minutes. You know, and just some are good, some are bad. Yeah, you know? yeah, but, that's cool. I know um, NTA next year. Uh, Brian Nelson's asking, he wants me to track down him bluegrass band i believe that would be cool so we'll see That'd be awesome you know i and i, I don't I, know what night i can't remember what night he told me but i gotta we gotta line up some music so that that would be really awesome really awesome and i think that's what would uh 
you know, stuff like that to help draw, you know, and draw people maybe not necessarily that are into our um, industry, but they would come there maybe sooner for the show concert, you know, and just see what we're about. Um, it's not going to hurt, you know. Right, yeah. I just think where everything's at, I mean, everybody just wants to have fun, cut loose, um, you know, because we are, I think we're going into rough times, you know, um, time to enjoy it, you know, maybe that's just the, the, my age thing, the older I get or whatever, you know, maybe I don't know, that. not invincible anymore, you know, like a person thinks. Put you on the spot, Kendall, so are you going to, you're going to, the FTA convention is going to be in, in Iowa next year, your home state. So you guys should perform. Yeah. Mike, Mike, uh, he asked us to. Okay. And, uh, and then I talked to him. He said, uh, there might be stuff that might be coming up that, you know, probably ain't going to work out. I mean, and I wasn't, you know, I got to look at our schedule because I, I know, I mean, right now I think I have to fly back. I just found out I got a flight, jump on a plane from the NTA to fly back to do a concert. And then I think the next weekend, which is Iowa, I think we're booked, but that's where I told Mike, you know, I'd have to see, but um, yeah, I mean, it, it'd be cool to, cool to do something, you know, um, stuff like that. And I got a lot of, I mean, that, that whole week or even before, I mean, we're, Right now they're talking about the NTA Western um, is tying up with the PA and it's like I was talking with uh, Leon and Denise from Top Lot and uh, I said, well, if we go to that, I think it's yeah, the Western Convention when they want to do it, we'll have one day to load and to get the PA. You know, it's like everything's jammed together. You know, yeah. like NTA, FTA, um, because NTA of course moved um, up a week. You know, and then of course the FTA is you know the next week, but running gun, yeah, know, running gun, yeah. I mean, it's good in a way that the FTA and the NTA for twenty twenty five are so far apart ge geographically, but it it does make a, a you know that's a lot of running. Oh yeah, the dealer. I mean, uh, you know, setting up, tearing down, then get on the road, get stuff ready for the next one. Right. You know, it's just uh, it's it's a lot, but. I mean, th th this time of year, I mean, we're so, uh, my brother today, just, you know, talking circles, he's like, we got a lot of stuff to do. I'm like, I know, I know, because it's like convention, 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 you know, he does New York and North Carolina and Wisconsin, I got Iowa, Missouri, Nebraska, I mean, we got quite a few conventions to get through yet, you know, just, but it is what it is. Yeah. We'll make it work. But it's been years since I ran around the the convention circuit. We just we just FTA NTA. Next year we're doing Pennsylvania as well. We'll do Indiana, and we have one at our shop. And yeah, maybe Illinois, and that's it. You know, so but yeah, no, it's it's a lot. It's just a um to be a, a road dog, I suppose you should call it. But I think it comes from the music end of it. Just man, just I can remember trying to do conventions and then plan that one time we had like 22 shows in July to do music shows and then trying to, yeah, but I mean, it's, <laughs> we do, you know, I mean, you almost feel guilty by not going there because, you know, customers rely on, you know what I mean? Right. Yeah, exactly. You know, I was looking at the North Dakota convention. It's like there's, two dealers there and they're having it just part a part day you know it's, it's going by the wayside you know so when you you guys know you got to have dealers have conventions you know yeah yeah hmm. Hmm. so i'm assuming with the music it, it took a while obviously to to grow into that like this business to get well known to get known you know yeah. um you know, I, I wasn't into, I got into it a very, very strange way. Um, you know, lost a, a dear friend to a car wreck and that's, I just wanted to do it. You know, and that's what, that's when I said back on July, July 4th, 1993, I said, I'm going to dedicate my life to two things, 
that I, you know to make a living at that I cannot get enough of. And I'm doing yeah. it, you know, and just after all these years, still doing it, you know. I had there was a older lady; she's been following us for years, and she's like, she sees us once a year play. She's like, oh, you're still up there doing it. And I'm like, well, <laughs> you know, that's all I really know, you know. But but yeah, it's a lot of trial and error, you know. Did the Nashville thing. Um, my drummer now works for or my cousin. He works with Miranda Lambert, Nashville. When our first band broke up, he went right to Nashville, got hooked up with the Mavericks within six months. And now he works with Miranda, you know, and just, so it's pretty cool. And yeah. That out. Thanks for dress and stuff like that. So. Yeah. The trapping. I don't know. We were down there in Nashville and we were like, God, this could happen. And I was scared that it could take away from my trapping. And I was. But I don't regret it. I mean, this is, was my first love, you know. Um, and that's why, I, you know, I'm happy the way it worked out. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Got the best of both worlds. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yep. Yep. Well, that's great. We should probably wrap it up. Where are you heading this weekend, Kendall? Actually, we got, I'm going to, I got, I'm going to Montana. Montana, I got, so we got a couple dealers out there. I delivered to at the Western and they needed some product and I might make it worth my while. And they both did. So I'm going on a road trip, get away for a little bit. We're off for a couple of weeks. And oh, cool. Play, play Labor Day weekend. And, you know, and then it's time to start trapping in October. Yeah. So I'm ready. here before you know it too. I'm, I'm ready to do I'm it excited. again. You know what I mean? I mean, it goes yeah. quick. It yeah. goes quick. But I'm ready. So you ready? I'm ready. <laughs> so if anybody wants, if anybody wants to contact you, just it, it's it, it's no BS lures.com. Is that correct? Yep. Yeah. Yep. No BS lures.com. Um, shoot me an email. No BS lures at gmail.com. Um, we're very, uh, very good about, well, Kurt does. We usually try to answer the phone seven days a week. He does. Um, we're very big on that. Um, sometimes you don't get at it, but um, we try to, you know, be most accommodating as we can. So, yeah, like I said, I really appreciate the opportunity, guys. It means a lot, you know. Yeah, we appreciate yeah. you. Appreciate you jumping on. So Awesome. And now, too, we should mention we, we carry your K9 Extreme Juniors here awesome. at Hooster Trapper. So, I appreciate it, guys. That's <laughs> what it's about. That's what it's about. I mean, it all helps out, you know, so it's, it's awesome. I appreciate it. Really do. Yeah. You just back us up more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's awesome. I appreciate it, guys. Well, good right. deal. All right, everyone. Thanks again for tuning in. All the links are in the description on things that we talked about, including nobslures.com. And uh, we'll be back in two weeks with another guest. Yeah. So, yeah. Awesome. All right. Thanks, we'll see guys. you later, Kendall. Appreciate it.